All right, our next assignment is assignment five. We're going to do animation for the first time. And this is what I consider our final compositing project, where we're still just using other people's pixels <laughs> to create something that's original and our own. But this time, we're going to start with something we've already created. So you are expected to start with an image or part of an image that you've already created for the class. So let's think of what we've already created for the class. We've done two exercises. One was a cartoon jumble. So you can use that and you can animate with that. The next was a shape-based composition. So you can use that, all those vector shapes in Photoshop that we made to, to recreate a composition we found. You could use that to animate with. Uh, next, we did a fantasy landscape. That was from at least five different sources. You can use that as something you animate with because you still have all those different sources, right? So you can make, make the mountain jump up and down in your landscape. That would be an animation. You, we made a creature design. You can animate with that. We then put the creature in the landscape. So you can animate your creature in your landscape. Then we just did a cloud. You can animate with the cloud. Right? And you can do any mix of those as well. As long as you're using at least part of or one full project that you've already created as part of your animation. You can also bring in new things. So if I wanted to put my creature into the land of Looney Tunes, you know, I could do that for my animation. You will sketch a storyboard, um, and that storyboard needs to show not just movement, which is what animation is, right? But it has to show an actual transformation, a metamorphosis from one state to another. And that could be a metamorphosis of a character, so if you put a creature in the background, it would be more typical for the creature to change, right? Or it can be a metamorphosis of the setting. So if you just have your have something in a background like your creature, but then the your creature stays the same, maybe the creature is moving around a little bit, but it doesn't change, but the setting changes. It changes from morning to night, or it changes from sunny to stormy, or it changes from winter to summer, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, those are all examples of metamorphoses. We start by sketching the storyboard, then we are going to animate it, and then we are going to create a finished storyboard using basically the film stills from our digital files. Because it's hard to show an animation in a print portfolio, so we do it with what's called a refined storyboard. There's a lot to it. Um, there's a lot of repetition. So we really want to have a plan. Animation is all about having a plan to begin with. So we're going to start with sketching. So let's look at some past student examples. We'll see their storyboards, we'll see their refined storyboards, and we'll see their animations. So I'd like you all to storyboard, though I say on the assignment sheet, you can do it in different ways. The, the best overall way for this project is to storyboard with square panels and to do three on three. So nine panels overall. Uh, you want to keep it to one scene, which means it's one setting. You're not required to, but it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So a scene is any any um, one place. Think of like a stage play. Anytime you have to change the sets to show a new location or a new time, that's a change of scene. So we want to keep it to one scene. And then this is how a basic storyboard might work. You have beginning, middle, and end, right? <coughs> The beginning, you're establishing the setting and the, and the character. Now, every story needs a setting and a character. A character is the thing that the, the viewer experiences the story through. So the character can be a, a leaf on a branch, right? And then what is the setting? Well, the setting is the sky and the rest of the tree, right? But we're paying attention to the leaf. And we're experiencing the story through that leaf's experience on that tree. So you need a character and you need a setting. And then what makes it animation as opposed to just a photograph or a snapshot is the illusion of time passing. And we're going to do the illusion of time passing a lot like comic books do with sequential images. But then we play them back in the computer at a certain amount of time where it will play one image before it moves to the next image. And it'll be fractions of a second. And that gives us the animation. So we actually get to control the time passing. 
So this is a time-based media that we're, we're using. But in your storyboard, you're not controlling how the time passes. You're giving the illusion of time passing by having sequenced images, right? So in the first, she's zoomed out here, and then she's going to zoom in on the setting, and it's going to introduce her character that we're going to experience the story through. What is the story? The story is a transformation, a metamorphosis. So what happens? Um, the creature starts to grow these horns. These horns start to glow white. Then the white takes over the whole scene. And this is really good for a repeating endless GIF animation that's pretty short. It's, this is what's called setting to reset. So by the end panel, you're ready to start again with the first panel. So it doesn't jump cut, right? So that's the sketch. That was the intention. They, they used their creature design and their setting design. You know, basically their assignment three where they put their creature into their setting. And then they zoomed in, started to grow the antlers, the antlers start to glow, and then it resets. And then this is how it animates. So even though your storyboard's only nine frames, your animation is gonna be a lot more than nine frames, right? It's gonna be a minimum of nine frames, but it's probably gonna be more, more like 20 to 50 frames. And the more frames you have, you know, the smoother it will be So this, this is a really classic storyboard where you might have notes on the side, you have margins underneath to write notes. But all a storyboard really needs is to, for you to understand it. So this one's really basic. We start with a setting. The transformation is that it gets set on fire <laughs> and it just builds and builds and builds. So they use their setting design and they're compositing in flames, more and more flames more and more smoke and then the smoke sets to reset as it starts to clear it's going to catch on fire again so that's a nice example of a transformation of a setting instead of a transformation of a character here we only have eight frames right but you have the basic idea of a creature coming in and doing something to change the setting transform the setting and then leave so here the creature isn't changing. The creature is the reason, it's like a natural disaster, that the setting changes. And that is also a transformation or a metamorphosis. And then you get that nice little kind of GIF animation, meme quality, change of expression on the cat. I mean, animation's fun for all the little choices you'll make, right? The storyboard is your main story, the main things you need to get across, but little special effects, like the glowing green of the eyes and the extra pulse and the expression at the end, that's all gravy that will make it fun later. So here's one, another transformation of the setting. A very clever way to set to reset by going to a fuzzy screen, like we're seeing this as video footage, because we are. Here we have an entirely character-based animation. Now, so when you see something like this, I say that what's required for a narrative is character setting and the illusion of time passing. Does this have setting? It, it doesn't have any intentional setting, right? But there is no such thing as a story without a setting. So as the viewer, we make up the setting, right? And we'll take whatever context clues we can to make it up. And that's why like, there could be a panel of Garfield outside and all it is is white, but because Garfield has a scarf on, oh, we know it's cold outside. So we can, we can do without a setting, but realize it still impacts the, the story. Because the, the viewer will always imply a setting. They'll fill it in. Now, what's fun here is instead of setting to reset, they just rewind the animation. They play it backwards. So it's like, it, it's like a phoenix that is reborn by eating its own flame. So there's lots of clever ways to deal with this. This is another character based animation. And it gives us the setting behind. It's just like a backdrop for a play. And I like how the head kind of explodes off this way and then rolls back in very quickly. 
what I really like about this one, which is really tough to do and a, a good challenge if you're up to it, is the different speeds at which it works. So you have this very slow moving island, but then a very fast moving creature. And this takes a lot of panels to make work. So this is probably around 90 panels. Okay, so what's the first thing we need to do? We have to decide which assets we're going to use from past projects. So I, I tend to always use my creature and I tend to always use them in my setting. So I'm thinking I'm gonna change that up a little bit. Why not? And just for fun, I'm gonna put my creature into a new setting. So the element I'm gonna use is my creature and I'm gonna transform my creature. I'm not quite sure how yet. So maybe I need to, to find a cool setting to put him in. So I'm gonna to go to Chrome, gonna look for Google Images, um, actually, I'm going to go right to Pixabay so I don't have to deal with small ones. I'm going to log in. All right, and I'm going to search for, let's see, um, Fields of Paradise. So I'm thinking kind of a jungle setting. So jungle landscape. Pixabay makes you spell things right. <coughs> so this is the interesting thing to think about for setting. And this is why we designed our, our assignment one fantasy landscapes in a certain way. This is beautiful. This is beautiful, but they have something in it that makes animation really problematic. They have moving elements in them, right? So if they're, yeah, the water, if it just stayed still behind a moving character, that would look wrong. Same thing here, same thing here. Now there are ways we can animate the water, which is no big deal, but it's just an extra step. Whereas this one, it's got the water, but it doesn't have like clear waterfalls. And it's got foreground, middle ground, and background. So even though I didn't create this landscape, it might be a really good one to use. And because it's Pixabay, I get it at a really high resolution. And it's free for commercial use, and there's no attribution required, so it is a Creative Commons open. And it has now downloaded. So I'm going to save that to my desktop. And now I know my setting and I know my character, right? So now I'm going to sketch my storyboard. So you're gonna do this in your sketchbook, but I'm just gonna do it digitally. If Photoshop can keep up with me. There we go, finally. Now I have to think what would be a fun transformation, right? That's doable, that doesn't require a ton of new work. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to draw my storyboard. <coughs> and I just want you to do nine frames. They can be rough, but leave gutter space around them. This is the gutter. And every time you pass over the gutter, that's time passing. It might be a fraction of a second, or it might be two hours but between each gutter is time passing. Your first row of three, that's the beginning. Your second row is the middle and your last row is the end. And you wanna think even in this short little GIF animation in those three stages, beginning, middle, and end. All right, 
So now we're set up. 